Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I'm a business valuation expert in St. Louis, Missouri. During this episode, we will discuss litigation and arbitration or post-acquisition disputes from a CPA and an accounting expert. We have the privilege today to discuss these issues with Scott Stringer, a fellow testifying expert and arbitrator in Naples, Florida. Well, and one of the things, so you've talked about two types of disputes. One is the working capital and one is the earnouts. So I want to know if there's other types of disputes, but when, when you encounter these, do they typically start in arbitration and then go to litigation or the reverse? And I, I and I apologize. So I use the term litigation as any dispute, right? Okay. So, so going to arbitration is a, an alternative dispute resolution, but in my mind, it's 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 it is a it is a dispute that's being resolved by a neutral. So it's it's really litigation in my mind. Uh, but they they go to either to arbitration or litigation, and typically, if they go to arbitration, it's because the parties have agreed in advance in the in the in the agreement. Uh, to go to arbitration, we see a lot. We see those in employment clauses. We see them in in, in lots of other things as well. But um, I think your question was, what other types of disputes were there in litigation? Okay, sure. yeah. So so you had the earnouts, and I just I did that because it was it, it's more uh, it, it's a little easier to understand, um, and it's just so of of all the disputes we have, it's one that I I just think that a tremendous amount, high percentage of them. Are disputed because it's just because it's just how soft that 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 can be, and the the, the um, seller loses ent- the entire control of their revenue stream. They they handing it to the buyer, and the buyer, you know, if the buyer has a bad year, the seller is immediately going to say, "You're manipulating my numbers." If the debt seller has a good year, of course, the buyer's not going to say a thing. You know, but um, so I started with that. The second one, really, where. Uh, uh, there's a lot of nitty gritty and where I have served as an arbitrator and that's going to be working capital adjustments. So when they, when you buy a company, most people are buying a company based because of what they think it's going to earn in income. Right. So it has, you know, it's really, it's not so much about the balance sheet per se. It's really, is this a good company? Is this strategic fit? Um, you know, if I'm a financial buyer, uh, what's my, my earnings going to be as a, as a percentage of revenue, is my profit margins great? Um, you know, is the industry good, et cetera? And, uh, but the balance sheet comes along with that. And on the balance sheet can be a, accounts receivable, again, which is a promise to pay, accounts payable, these are my debts, uh, cash, and so on and so forth, inventory for, for manufacturing companies. So these, can, these are not insignificant components to a purchase price. The, the, the difference, what, what, what what makes these contentious is, is that you cannot predict those, uh, the way, what those are going to be on the day to close three months in advance, because those are the kind of things that change with every transaction every day. And so uh, companies will determine what that, a target working capital number and that target working capital number is agreed as part of the purchase price. And then everybody works to get this thing closed. The thing finally closes. There is a post-closing balance sheet that, that is that is done, and that post-closing balance sheet is, should be the the exact minute that that uh, the transaction happens. So, you know, that's the that what the buyer bought was this point in time, twelve midnight on X date. Take a snapshot of that. Oh, I did that. There you go. Uh, I did that. Okay. Okay. Um, and so then, then each party. So, so then the the uh, the buyer would then uh, would and the seller would would come to some agreement as to the working capital number and compare and contrast that to the target. And in a perfect world where everybody plays really well with each other, um, and 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 everybody's on the up and up, and they've got a great relationship, and they go, oh yeah, you know, this is that, and this is that. It doesn't even get to arbitration. They they settle it among themselves. And uh, but in many cases, sometimes it isn't the whole thing, but maybe there's two or three items. Uh, maybe there's six or seven items that they can't agree on. They'll and typically that the asset purchase agreement, yeah, which is versus a stock purchase agreement, um, 
will spell out, you know, what do we do if we have working capital issues? And so uh, in many cases lately, uh, uh, and I say lately by the last 20 years or so that I've been involved, they typically have arbitration clauses that, that either allows for some independent neutral who's not identified or what I've seen in the last decade or so is that they will, because of the financial nature of that, they will stipulate uh, an accounting uh, firm or an accounting, uh, a, a range of accounting firms or national firms or whatever that each one would agree to. Um, and so that uh, that is how I served as an arbitrator in post-acquisition disputes. 